Hi, I'm Eli Yeaman. Welcome to the Jazz Academy, Jazz at Lincoln Center. I'm joined by a great band today, Alvin Atkinson on the drums, Ari Roland bass, and Tom Dempsey is here on the guitar. And I want to talk to you, Tom, about how we share the comping role between guitar and piano. You yeah, got some thoughts on that? It's a big topic. When I first started getting into playing jazz, was that was always an issue. Like, how do I work with a piano player? How do I find a way to be able to play music together with the pianist and also the rest of the rhythm section? Mm -hmm. And I discovered that sometimes you have to find different chords to play when you're playing in a rhythm section so that it all sounds like a band, not like four people playing individually. Mm. So one of the things I see with a lot of young rhythm sections, especially with the guitar player, is when they get ready to play on a tune, they're playing the way that they would on any tune. So they might use bigger chords that don't really work well in that context. I'm gonna give you an example. We're gonna play on an F blues, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show you how a lot of guitar players end up playing within the rhythm section, playing on an F blues, playing what we call bar chords. And you guitar players out there know what, what those mean. So let's check it out. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So yes, we addressed all the harmony, but it wasn't really very musical up Ooh, here, right? Man, that's there, like so much sound. Uh, I know, and you know, if you look just at the size of the piano, there's going to be so much information coming from that instrument, and then when you start using big chords like this, it just clutters everything up, and it doesn't make for a real musical presentation and a musical sound for the rhythm section. A better thing to do is to work with chords that take away the root. So I'm going to play some chord voicings, real simple voicings, that just take away the root. They're called, as you might think, rootless voicings. And this way, working with the pianist, we're able to get a little bit more of a musical sound happening. So we're going to play on that same F blues, and I'm going to play rootless voicings along with the rest of the rhythm section. Okay? One, two, a one, two, three, four. Already, that's a huge difference from what we did just a second ago between the full chords and now the rootless voicings. Another thing that you can try to check out is instead of playing just rootless voicings, play just the guide tones. Now the guide tones of any chord are the third and the seventh, and they're really going to give you all of the harmonic information that you need to be able to define the harmony. And you can do different things with them in relationship to what's going on in the rhythm section, which really helps to make for a lot more variety within the sound of the rhythm section and just a much more musical presentation. So let's do that. Okay? One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> So you might have even noticed that the way that I was playing, I was moving within a real small area of the guitar neck, but what I was playing worked so much better with the rhythm section and really helped to make for a much more musical presentation. Studying your guide tones and being able to comp with rootless voicings is a long study, but it's one that you should really start to embark upon now to get that jazz harmonic knowledge under your fingers and on the neck of this instrument.